Now I'm going to show you how to trigger a Slack message from your Dialogflow chatbot. Um, so we're going to take the example from the last videos one step further, which is um, the get name chatbot that just prompts the user to get a name. And we're going to trigger a Slack notification every time that a user submits their name. Um, so one thing to point out here is that this is different from integrating your Dialogflow chatbot with Slack. So you can also hook Dialogflow up to Slack and then just keep chatting to your chatbot via Slack. Um, but what we're doing is a different thing. We're just triggering a so-called webhook, a Slack hook. Uh, to just uh, send one message at one certain point in the interaction with the chatbot. Cool, so there's a pretty neat documentation on uh, api.slack.com slash incoming minus webhooks about this that we just need to follow step by step. Um, the first step is we need to create a Slack app. So I created a workspace earlier which is my Slack space, Peter's mastermind group. <laughs> and uh, just to test this, I created a private channel, name minus chatbot. And now what we need to do is creating a Slack app. Uh, going to call it similar or exactly like my chatbot actually. And this is my Slack workspace. Cool, create app. Then, according to the documentation, the next step is we need to enable incoming webhooks and then create an incoming webhook, which I'm going to do now. So here, we're going to do the settings, activate incoming webhooks. And now I'm going to create a new webhook. So this loaded, this already loaded all the channels in my workspace. Since I just created uh, the workspace, there's not many. So this is the one that I created to test the chatbot. I'm clicking authorize. I'm sorry for the German translations. I should try to set everything to English soon. Um, Okay, cool. So now what did we get? I'm going to take a look here into my uh, Slack channel and we can already see that there was a notification here that the integration was added. So this is my app. Um, and then I got a sample curl request. We can just give that a try. Copy that into the terminal and go back to the browser and we can see wow that that was easy so there's already a message has been sent to the slack hook and what we just tried with curl we're just going to do inside the chatbot fulfillment code now so what i need to do is copy this slack hook url here copy it and then I'm going to go to my Dialogflow chatbot to Fulfillment. I already did some work previously here, so I don't need to enter it uh, all right now by hand. I'm going to miss, make mistakes if I'm going to do that, but I'm going to walk you through all the steps. Um, okay, so the first step that I did was I added a library which is called request here under the package.json which I need to, it's just a simple library to just send HTTP requests so the slack hook is just triggered via a simple HTTP post request so I added that library here and then nothing more needs to be done to install the library next time I click deploy it will um, it will be installed automatically which is the same as when you when you execute npm install in your local terminal but it's done in the firebase cloud function instead 
Okay, so then now I'm back in the index.js. Uh, I added, well, I'm requiring the library here. Uh, that is actually the second step to make use of the library. I'm calling it request lib here, not just request to to uh, navigate around potential problems that might arise later when I have um, uh, callbacks where with the request where I get a variable that has the same name as request so that's why I picked this name here and then for my last videos if I'm just gonna run through what I did here again so the last thing that I did was I created a function save name which saves a name that is received to the chatbot in the real-time database so that's this part and also we generate a reply here at the bottom I map this function to two of my intents you can watch my previous video for the detailed explanation and another thing that I'm doing here is I'm I'm reading the name parameter into this variable. So the only thing that I modified inside this function now is that I added this line here. I'm calling a new method, send Slack message, and I pass the name that I extract from the parameters into my new message. So let's take a look at what this function looks like. So here I'm just defining a an object for the message body. Like I said earlier, the Slack hook is just uh, an HTTP POST request, so this is the body of the POST request. Uh, I can define any username, which is going to appear later in the chat, and an emoji. And then this is the text that the message will have, and I'm just appending the name that's passed to the method here. Then I'm calling the request library dot post uh, with this. So important that the content type is JSON, and this the URL was from a previous trial. So I just created a new Slack hook. So I'm going to paste the URL that I copied earlier in here. Cool. And then one important thing here is for the body. There's going to be an error from the request library if I just pass it as a JavaScript object like that. So I'm calling json.stringify here to flatten everything into a string. And then we just have a uh, log to log success or failure in the console. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to deploy it. Um, one thing I need to point out is in order to um, do an HTTP request to anywhere outside of the Google Cloud ecosystem, I needed to upgrade my Google, well, my account to a paid plan. I'm going to show you here. So this is the Firebase console, console.firebase.google.com. And as you can see here, I'm now on Blaze Pay As You Go. So when you sign up previously, it is on the free Spark plan. But that unfortunately does not allow us to send HTTP requests to outside of the Google Cloud ecosystem. So I changed to Pay As You Go. And here, this is the uh, Cloud Functions log where you can see success or error messages. Cool, we can take a look at that later again. So I deployed everything, deployed my updated cloud function with the Slack hook URL. So I'm gonna give it a try. In theory everything should work now. So let's start again. Hey, what's your name? It's Peter. Thank you, Peter. So that is the reply that we defined up here in the save name function. And now we can see, oh yes, 
there has been a new submission from PJ, which is the text that I defined in my cloud function. Cool. Uh, if we look at the cloud functions log, we can see here there, that there was a, a log from the Slack notification, which is uh, which is this thing. So the response body, uh, which uh, yeah, just logs in OK. So everything's OK. And it worked. Perfect. That's it for me today. See you in the next video.